It's another Stock of the Week debut, this time for house builder Barclay Group, which has just released four-year results. With mortgage rates soaring and interest rates still rising, this is a crunch point for the UK housing market. Homeowners are being squeezed and house prices are falling, according to some measures. But this huge period of anxiety and market stress isn't really reflected in Barclays' results, which are for the year to the end of April. Pre-tax profits were up nearly 10%, revenue was nearly 9% higher, and home sales were 7.5% above the year before. Its net cash position also improved by £141 million to £410 million. The company also maintained its profit guidance for the coming financial years to just above £1 billion for both years. So far, so good. But market sentiment is a different thing altogether. The company's chief executive said that potential buyers are waiting until interest rates peak or at least stabilise before taking the plunge. He described the current malaise as a horrible transition period that people are anxious to get through. To that end, Barclay said that sales could fall up to 20% in this financial year, a number that has rattled investors. Still, shares are roughly flat in the year to date after a turbulent 2022. Morningstar analysts think the shares remain undervalued, but they're not as cheap as, say, Persimmon, which focuses on the lower end of the market. Our analyst, Grant Slade, argues that house builder shares are very much still pricing in the worst case scenario. He argues that the market is really just at a cyclical low after a long period of rising prices and demand. And demographic changes and planning restrictions will underpin the market in the coming decades, he predicts. In terms of div dividends, Barclay isn't a big yielder, but it's also embarked on a shareholder return programme that will work, be worth nearly £300 million until 2025 with a mixture of dividends and buybacks. Are Barclays results the last hurrah before the market slumps? Or will the company manage to weather the coming storm? We'll probably find out in the coming months. Until then, I've been James Gard for Morningstar.